Hello, this Science of Sport video uh, is all about BTEC Sport and Exercise Sciences, Unit 2 Functional Anatomy, and we are looking at the Learning Aim E, all about the muscular system. So specifically, this is one of a series of videos which looks at neuromuscular control or the neuromuscular process of muscular contraction, and it relates to Learning Aim E2. This um, part, part one, is about neuromuscular control in terms of our brain activating or innovating a muscle and instructing it to contract. The next video looks at much more um, molecular detail about how our muscle fibers contract. The specification um, specifies a couple of points that you need to understand. Basically what an impulse is or an action potential is, a neuromuscular junction and the neurotransmitter that's relevant to that neuromuscular junction and we will talk about those three things in this video. So a lot of our sporting actions um, happen uh, in a stimulus response way. There's something in our environment around us that acts as a stimulus. So in my image on the slide um, there's a tennis player, a tennis ball and our brain helps us respond to that. It could be in football, a ball's coming towards you, that's the stimulus, and your brain will give instructions to muscles all over your body to enable you to jump and header it or step forward and kick it. So that's a stimulus response action. In order for us to do that though, we have to use that stimulus information, make a decision, and then send instructions out to our muscles. And what we're basically talking about here are some of our nervous systems. So you should know there are different senses in our body. Sight is one, um, audition is another, hearing, uh, touch is another. And we take in information through our senses. Now, for example, if I've got a tennis ball in my hand or I throw the ball up in the air in a tennis serve, that information is felt and seen and the information about how high, how high I've thrown the ball or how heavy it is um, goes from my eyes or from my fingers up sensory neurons to my brain. So sensory neurons take information from our senses to our central nervous system and our central nervous system is made up of our brain and spinal cord. So from my hand there'd be sensory information going along, along a sensory nerve to my spinal cord, up my spinal cord to my brain. From my eyes sensory information goes from my uh, along sensory neurons to my brain and my brain is my computer that analyzes everything and very immediately will respond by sending out instructions along nerves. The nerves that take the instructions to our muscles are called motor neurons. So information for, about the ball via our senses to our brain, and our brain sends out impulses to our limbs to move in a coordinated way by muscular contraction such that I can hopefully hit the ball in my serve. So again this diagram on the right shows that quite nicely. Sensory input, motor output all controlled by our central nervous system, our brain. So key bits of information there, sensory neurons, motor neurons, sensory in, motor out. And actually the way uh, instructions are carried is an electrical or an electrochemical impulse. Um, so nerves transmit impulses, transmit the instructions or the messages that go to and from our muscles. Another name for that impulse is called an action potential and look at that again a bit later. So it's lots of jargon really to get your head round. So just to give you an overview really, um, there are probably three types of nervous system that we'll talk about. Two of them are here. So you need to understand that your central nervous system basically is your brain and your spinal cord. It's the supercomputer of your body and almost like the main motorway, the main highway with which messages are relayed up and down to different parts of your body. So that's our central nervous system and you might see that abbreviated as CNS. Then also we've got our peripheral nervous system. So these are all the nerves that go to the peripheral areas of your body, so down your arms, down your legs. Um, these are the types of nerves that take information from your senses to your 
brain and from your brain to your muscles. And here you can say the, the PNS um, includes sensory and motor neurons. So these would be the bigger neurons going all over your body to your muscle. More specifically, nerves can look a little bit different. So over here, really, these on the right hand side are the two that probably you need to focus on. This one is an example of a motor neuron. So an instruction would come this direction down via the cell body, down the axon. The axon is the central sort of a road or pathway and get to these uh, motor end plates down here and that's a muscle cell. So an instruction or an action potential would come down this nerve and make the muscle cells at the end of it contract. So this is a sensory neuron. This would take information from senses, the receptor cell. So this could be something related to your skin and touch receptors or your sight, you know, eyes, any kind of sensory organ. And the information again travels along the axon, notably the cell bodies in the middle there. You won't need to know that level of anatomical detail, I don't think, but basically the impulse or the action potential comes along the sensory neuron to these um, dendrites at the end here. OK, so sensory and motor neurons. Looking specifically at a motor neuron, one thing that's really good for you to understand is how a neuron being myelinated is an advantage. So if we look at this bottom neuron nerve cell, the impulse or action potential would spread this way along it. Now, what you can see is that this one is bare. It's a bare axon. This yellow road with which the impulse travels along is a bare axon. This axon is myelinated. It's got these cylindrical um, green color bits wrapped around it. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So the impulse comes along, comes along, comes along, gets to the end and off it goes. And what an action potential impulse actually is, is a wave of depolarization. You can see hopefully here that this axon is polarized. There's, it's got a positive charge on the outside and in the inside of the axon, it's got a negative charge. You can see this section here where the impulse actually is, it's reversed, it's depolarized. There's been some chemical changes. Um, in relation to inside and outside the axon membranes, such that this section is depolarized. This section, the impulse hasn't got to yet, so it's in its normal state, it's polarized again. So as this impulse moves further forward, it will depolarize these bits. So, you know, on a comb, if you put your fingers along a comb, the sort of strands of the comb bone ping, 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 all the way along, this depolarization happens all the way along the axon. Um, of this motor neuron. So this is a, an unmyelinated axon. And in actual fact, this is a slow way to transmit an impulse along it compared to a myelinated axon. And the reason is these green cylindrical cells that are wrapped around the axon are called myelin sheaths. They actually wrap around the axon and insulate it. Now you should be able to see that the depolarization on this one happens all the way along, like a, like a set of dominoes going all the way along, ping, 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 depolarizing. On this myelinated axon, you can see that the depolarization actually only happens in the gaps, in the gaps, in the gaps, and the arrows here indicate the impulse jumping to the next gap, jumping to the next gap, jumping to the next gap. Now that jumping speeds up how fast the impulse travels along this neuron. So the important thing to record, to know here is that a myelinated axon uh, transmit an impulse faster. Now some, bi some bits of terminology to recognize here. So the gaps that I talked about, these gaps are called the nodes of Ranvier. Um, the depolarization basically is where the positive and negative charges inside and outside the axon change. Uh, the jumping process is called saltatory conduction, S-A-L-T-A-T-O-R-Y, saltatory conduction. And that's a good thing. It's, it's the sped up impulse traveling along a myelinated axon. Okay.
I'm not going to dwell on this slide too long, but just trying to give you another sense of how the um, impulse travels along a neuron in a sort of dominoes way. So this section of it depolarizes, then this section of it depolarizes, then this section of it depolarizes. It's like a knock-on effect as the impulse travels along the axon. And this, uh, these diagrams on the right really just show, remember I called it an electrochemical. It's, it's to do with um, chemicals changing and moving in and out of the membranes, but that also changes the electrical charge. You can see the positives and the negatives. And this shows where a section is depolarizing, the charge becomes positive inside the membrane. So this represents what goes on inside the membrane. It's negative normally, and then it becomes positive when the impulse is there. And then as the impulse goes on, it goes back to being negative, and that's back to negative. But really don't worry too much about that. Just know it's like a, a domino effect of depolarization. Now, impulses going along a neuron may pass on to another neuron. So this is a neuronal synapse. This is a join. It's, a synapse basically means a gap between these two features. So an impulse would come along here and go across the gap and then travel along this next neuron. So this is two neurons where, where almost like a baton, the impulse comes like a baton in a relay race onto the next neuron. That's a neuronal synapse. Or what we'll talk about more in sports science is a neuromuscular, and that actually makes sense, nerve muscle, a nerve cell connecting to muscle fibers. So this, so an impulse will come along this neuron, this motor neuron, it would get to these motor end plates, which connect to a muscle fiber. And at that connection, there's a gap and that's the synapse. And what we're going to look at in the rest of this video is how do we get an impulse from the nerve cell across that gap, across that synapse to the muscle cell so that hopefully we can make that muscle cell contract. So these images just try to give you a sense of the gap. Remember, we've got an impulse coming down a nerve. So the nerve would be um, up here extended in the diagram. And this is the motor, one of the motor end plates where there's a little gap. You can't see the gap brilliantly clearly on this, but it's where that sort of yellowy bluey section ends. And then the, there's a gap between that nerve ending and this muscle fiber. So this is a neuromuscular junction where a nerve meets or is in a junction with a muscle fiber. This diagram actually shows in an anatomical image. So from a microscope, this is the nerve this is a nerve ending, these are muscle fibers. So this shows neuromuscular junctions. Let me just go back a slide to give you a perspective. So where the nerve comes down, we've got different little branches that branch off and each one of those is a nerve ending, a motor end plate. And this diagram is basically one of those nerve endings and this is the motor end plate. And what we're gonna learn about in the last probably two slides, is how an impulse gets down here and gets across that synapse, across that gap into the muscle fibre. So let's look in detail then at the neuromuscular junction and getting across the gap. Impulse comes down this myelinated motor neuron. Here's the motor end plate, the gap between that cell and this cell. This doesn't look like a, a muscle cell, but in our um, study this would be a muscle cell. But what this shows nicely is the um, neuromuscular junction. This is the motor end plate, this is the end of the nerve, there's the gap and there's the place we've got to get the impulse across to. And we're going to tell the story of the really important neurotransmitter that helps us get an impulse from this side across the synapse to this side. So let's look at this right hand diagram. This is our nerve ending, this is our gap, and this would be effectively our um, muscle fibre. Now, first thing I want you to identify is that there are these circular sacs at the motor end. Now, these sacs are called vesicles, and the, here it's labelled there, vesicles are the sacs. Now, they contain this very important neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. 
ACH, you might see it abbreviated as. Now, when the impulse comes down this nerve or this nerve ending, that triggers these vesicles to migrate, to move towards the end of this um, nerve ending, towards the presynaptic membrane. Let's break that phrase down. Pre, before, synaptic, gap, membrane. So it's the vesicles move towards the membrane that's before the gap. And you can see here what the, what the vesicles actually do is they open and they open and release acetylcholine or ACH, which does its job. It carries this uh, electrochemical impulse, this message or instruction across the gap towards the other side where the mus muscle fiber is and hopefully into the receptor site. So these little jagged end bits here are receptor sites. Now, if enough ACH gets across the synapse and into the receptor sites, then we will develop um, enough of an impulse on this side in the muscle fibre to send the impulse down the muscle fibre both ways. And a trigger of things, a series of things then happen and we hopefully our muscle fibre will contract. So basically, impulse comes down the nerve, vesicles are um, triggered to move towards the presynaptic membrane. They then open and release the acetylcholine, which travels across the synapse. The acetylcholine uh, is accepted by the receptor sites. And if enough of it arrives there, an impulse will carry, a lot, carry on along the muscle fiber and everything's happy. Once that impulse has gone and gone along the muscle fiber, the ACH then is pretty much reorganized and reabsorbed and goes back into the vesicles. And it does that almost under instruction or control of this enzyme um, called acetylcholinesterase. So it breaks down, does its job, and then when it's finished, it's, it's mopped up and reorganized by this enzyme called acetylcholinesterase. And it's ready to do its job again back in the vesicles. And that's the cycle, really. So impulse comes down, it goes across, impulse carries on over the over the gap, and then the ACH is mopped up, ready to do it again. So it's an ongoing process, as long as there are impulses coming down the nerve cell. Slightly different perspective of it. Here's the um, action potential coming down the nerve cell. Here are the vesicles. When the impulse gets here, those vesicles migrate to the presynaptic membrane or the axon terminal, release the ACH, which travels across the synapse, goes into the receptor sites, and then I like this diagram because it actually shows a muscle fiber rather than just any other nerve cell. And the impulse, when it gets to this side, spreads in both directions. So the impulse comes down here and then spreads in both directions. The other thing just to note is what we can see here. Do you remember that muscle or skeletal muscle tissue is striped under a microscope? And we can see the striations, the stripes here. And we're going to look in much more detail at that in the next video. Pause the video, maybe have a little look at the diagram here. It's the same information, but I've just given you different ways to try and um, represent it. Here are our stripes again, slightly different version, which will make much more sense when we move on to the next video. So I just want to wrap this video up, uh, summarising in text for you what happens when an impulse arrives at a neuromuscular junction. You need to understand what a neuromuscular junction is. This diagram shows it best. It's the junction between a nerve cell and a muscle fibre. Um, this text describes what happens, the impulse, the acetyl-CoA and the acetylcholinesterase mopping it up afterwards. OK, so pause the video, take time to read through that. But it's basically what I've been explaining throughout.